If you've seen any of my NES RGB videos, you probably heard me talk about how annoying it is to have to drill these holes in the back of the case. This switch over here lets you select the palette for the NES RGB, and that's just an extra hole that I don't really love having to put into an NES. Luckily, Voltar has a mod based on a boardy design called the NES RGB IGR. This IGR mod lets you do two things. The first thing it lets you do is select the palette from the controller. So you can hold down a button combination and that allows you to cycle through the palettes that are on the NES RGB. The second thing it lets you do is actually reset the console from the controller. So if you've got a cool wireless controller or if you just don't feel like getting up from wherever you're sitting, you can reset the console, which is awesome if you have something like a, an NES EverDrive. So that way you can go back to the EverDrive menu and pick a different game, all without having to get up from your seat. If you've already installed an NES RGB yourself, then this mod is gonna be no sweat. So let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to do it. Bordy has a couple of good pictures on his IGR project page on GitHub that kind of show where we're gonna to need to solder some signals from the IGR to the NES. But first things first, let's get this console apart. As you can see, this NES has already been modded with an NES RGB kit. If you'd like to know how to do that, I'll leave a video in the description. The first thing that I'm going to do is install this IGR board over here on the NES RGB where the palette selector switch normally goes. So I'm going to desolder this bridge that I made and get this IGR board installed. Now I've got to take the NES RGB kit out of the socket so that I can wire up this little pin header on the underside of it. I'm going to put the small side of these pins here in these holes so that I don't have to cut any legs down because these caps underneath are, are kind of in the way. I'm going to try to do this one handed. Don't put your finger on the pin that you're going to solder. Make sure that when you're soldering this, this pin header is as far down as it can go. Once you get one of them on there pretty well, you can solder the rest. Just double check that this thing hasn't moved. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can put the NES RGB back. Okay, now we can solder this board onto those pins. And again, just make sure that it's level. All right, that's pretty good. However, if you look at this thing from the side, you can see those pins kind of stick up pretty far out. So I'm just gonna cut those pins down a little bit more flush. There we go, that's good. Now I have to work on wiring up this IGR board, but I have a little bit of a confession to make. I don't really like these instructions from Bordy. While the pictures are actually clear about what you're supposed to be doing, I have two main gripes with it. The first main gripe I have is pretty easy to bypass. His instructions say that you should get data here from the first controller port up here, but clock and latch from the CPU way over here. If you look at a pinout for the controller port, you can actually use a multimeter to test which of these wires in the controller plug thing here is for the data clock and latch. So we can use that to kind of find where on this plug where he says to get the data to get those other two signals. So I don't understand why he's saying to get it from the CPU. The second gripe is for the reset input and output. He has this complicated situation where you're supposed to disconnect some of the wires in the power and reset button plug. And that seems like a good idea on paper and especially for like no cut sake. You won't have to destroy anything if you just disconnect these cables from the plug here. But I think that disables the LED or you have to rewire up the LED in the power and reset board down here. And that doesn't really make sense to me. Why go through all that effort when there's probably an easy way to do it? And yes, there is. I'm gonna save you a lot of time and show you this picture I found in a tweet from Voltar from two years ago. In fact, this picture shows you how to do the wiring for this entire mod. So let's use this diagram and wire up our mod. First things first, let's tin all of the pads that we're gonna use. We're gonna tin 3.3 volts down here, five volts, reset out, and in and all three of these controller pads.
And while we're here, let's set this jumper that says low and high. This jumper is to switch which type of signal the IGR board is going to send the NES to reset it. In our case, since this is a front loader, the IGR board is gonna send five volts to the NES to reset it. So let's go ahead and jump the bottom two pads, which is for high. If you're wondering, I'm pretty sure that the low is for a top loader NES. The first bit of wiring we're gonna do is for five volts and ground. Let's start with five volts. If you look over here, there's a capacitor right there. That's where we're gonna get five volts from. And we're gonna go from here to five volts on the IGR board. I have a bunch of old ribbon cable kicking around. I'm gonna use a single wire to do this. Now we're gonna attach this to the right side of this capacitor right there. I would add some extra solder to the capacitor and then go ahead and solder to the capacitor. Next is three volts, which is gonna come from the IGR board here to this capacitor that's right by the IGR board and you wanna solder it to the left side of that capacitor. So we're gonna go from the left side of the capacitor to this pad on the board. Again, I'm gonna add some fresh solder. And then solder it to the 3.3 volt pad. Next, we're gonna work on this reset in and reset out. Take a look at the blue connector here for the power and reset buttons. If you look at the pin marked four here, what we're gonna have to do is cut a little chunk out of this wire here. Don't worry, that shouldn't be that hard to fix if you ever need to put this back to stock. We're gonna cut a little chunk out of it so that we sever the connection from the reset button to the NES itself. We are gonna be attaching wires to both of the severed pieces. So try not to cut too close to this blue connector and don't cut too close to the board itself. This is probably gonna beat up your side cutters, so try to use a crappy pair if you have them. This is what I ended up with. Next, grab a two wire piece of ribbon cable and solder one wire to the bottom piece and one wire to the top piece of this severed connection. I'm gonna solder the bottom one first. And then the top one. That's what I ended up with. And now let's wire the other end. The wire that you soldered to the top piece is gonna to go to RI, and the bottom piece is gonna to go to RO. Just like that. The last thing I have to do is the wiring for the controller, so let's get a three wire piece of ribbon cable. We're gonna start the wiring over by the controller connector here. We're gonna solder those three wires to this pin, that pin, and that pin on the controller connector. Let's tin those three pins. And solder those three wires. Now we can just bend those wires over. Keep an eye on the order. If you keep the ribbon cable flat like this, you should be able to solder these wires in that same order over here on the IGR board. All right, only one thing left to do, and that's test it out. So the NES is up with no problems. It's a pretty straightforward mod after the NES RGB, so you shouldn't have any problems with it. In order to cycle through palettes, you have to hold down start and select, and then you can use left and right on the D-pad to scroll through the different palettes. And to do a reset, you press start and select and A and B at the same time, and then let go. 
and then the console will restart and if you have an EverDrive, it will dump you back into the menu. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed if this video helped you out. And you can click this video to find out how to do an NES RGB mod with LaserBear's SnapFit Multi-Out. I'll see you in the next video.